Hello and welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we're stalking in Scotland, shooting with a syndicate and keeping Corvids under control. First up, we're heading to Argyll, where Chris Dalton is on a mission to protect a restocked woodland. We're uh, early morning, light's just coming up. Uh, we're down in Argyle, I'm actually um, just testing the new Zeiss. Um, it's the LRS5, so it's basically a long range precision scope, which clearly is not the beast of a scope that would normally have on my stalking rifles, because wooden stalking, we're talking shorter ranges, ranges, but this is a um, bit of an indulgence. I really wanted to test a, a scope like this in the woodland environment. We're working in low light conditions, so quality quality optics, big objective lens, um, should give us the advantage of being able to see deer early. And we've got restock sites down on our left and our right. Often seeker deer will be on the edge of the periphery of these, so I'm trying to get a seeker actually, so just about getting enough light to see to shoot hopefully now as we move off down here. So it's just been interesting to see how a, uh, a scope of this um, magnitude performs in, in these sort of fairly close confines. I'm hoping this weather improves a bit. It's horrible, it's that damp kind of rain, but anyway, we'll see. see the first hind we were looking at. Down below it's a calf. Come on, get on that calf. Get here. Yeah, that's quite nice this morning. It's uh, we managed to beat the rain. We stalked up on a group of hinds on the banking in front of us. Um, we've kind of made to come up using this bracken as cover. That's probably half a dozen eight red deer on there, but they're all working away all the time up the banking. Uh, I particularly want to want the calves. Um, I always shoot a calf before the hind anyway. And this one started to, to come across, so uh, fortunately gave me the broadside. So it's a 200 yard shot from here, but nice when you've got a scope of this magnitude. Um, admittedly, it wasn't quite a long range that this thing's capable of doing, but 200 yards in low light conditions, poor conditions, it's streak. Um, you need good clarity. And I could see the um, deer through the scope as well as I could see the deer through the binoculars. So. You see, I'm using Seiko um, non-toxic ammunition, 120 grain. It's the first time I've kind of used it. It did. The deer reacted to the shot. And it seemed to take it a, a little bit of a while to to drop, but I mean that can happen with lead as well. So we're going to have a look and see what the shot placement was like. But deer's deer's clearly dropped. You could see it drop low dead, just just pretty much about five feet from where it was shot. So we've given it five or ten minutes, let everything quieten down. The deer have, have moved off and then we'll go forward and, and pick it up. And one good thing about this is just behind that there's a box and a track. So I've actually got uh, a drag of about 100 metres. The older I get, the more I start thinking about things like that. OK, 
Okay, so perfect animal to take it's for the Christmas table. Nice calf, good condition. Placement, um, lucky really, it's gone exactly where I aimed, which was straight through the heart exit. Low shoulder, far side, really, really good condition. Um, 70, 80 meter drag to the road so we can get the car in here. So, we'll. This is an area we've been asked to concentrate on. We've got young trees in here, you can see them now, young Sitka. Coming along quite well, but obviously it's drawing, drawing the deer in from the trees. We get quite a lot of Sitka in here. And the reds early morning, you've got to get them early morning. They'll go down into the fields, then they'll browse on the way back through here, and then they'll go and lie up during the day in there. And Sika are even worse. You, you, you often only get the five or ten minutes of, of daylight to shoot them with. That's where the good quality optics comes into their own. If you can't see the deer, you can't shoot them. So the Zeiss, the, the lens on the Zeiss is superb. 56mm object lens on that precision rifle scope is, I mean, it's pretty food and drink to a scope like that. 200 yard shot from the banking. Uh, relatively easy stalk this morning. As oft is often the case, the deer were kind of working, constantly working away, coming up this little clear area here to make the way into the trees as a regular track goes through and the line to the, the line of Sitka spooks during the day. So, fairly easy drive to bring the car up here to pick her up. So, nice morning. Success. Dog gets kidneys. Next up, we're joining Jonathan McGee for a mixed bag day on his very own syndicate shoot in North Yorkshire. Tell me off for uh, using four turn. Yeah, well, really. got 28 more than that. Yeah. I wouldn't recognise it. Where is it? I told you there wasn't much of a walk there, didn't I? So we're getting towards the end of January now, later on in the season. We've got a freezing cold day here at my syndicate estate in, um, in North Yorkshire. I've got my, my good friend Richard, who's just stood up there behind that tree. <laughs> yeah, waving. Um, Richard's one of my best mates and we've been shooting together uh, for about half of our lives now. Um, and I wanted to bring him along to this little syndicate just to show him what it's like. I'm a relatively new ne new member. This is one of the first places I ever filmed five years ago now, one of the first shoots I ever filmed on. Um, and I was lucky enough to be invited to become a syndicate member. And I really want to show Richard just exactly what we can show here. Uh, there, won't be a load of, there won't be a lot of birds, um, but what we do show is quite fast. We can show some really, really tall birds when they flick over, but there's also exceptional, exceptionally large amounts of woodcock and snipe on the bottoms of the marshes. So fingers crossed we're going to have a good day.
So one of the things I really wanted to get across in, in, in this new series was the grassroots of shooting. We've been to some absolutely incredible estates, but this is how most people start, and this is how most of the couple of hundred thousand people in the UK actually shoot. So I'm using a little 28 bore today. Um, whole cartridge have once again been so generous as to, to give me a selection of cartridges to choose. These are one of their high pheasant loads, and they're just, again, they're a phenomenal little shell, 23 gram six, um, which for this rough shooting today, we have the capacity of showing some absolutely stonking pheasants. I mean, the hill up there from top to bottom is 400 meters. And when you flick a pheasant off the top there, it glides straight over and they are completely out of range. For us to be able to showcase that sort of pheasants on a day like this is amazing. And especially for me to show one of my best mates, that's absolutely fantastic. We're going to walk up and down and then line out with the top there. There's sometimes birds on the top here. They're, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, we saw quite a few grouse this year, didn't we? I'm surprised we've seen so many woodcock already. Well, I've seen a dozen. Like a mountain goat. So we're going to start walking in this general direction. Being one of the top guns, the uh, top beaters. I've come the highest up the hill, so I'm going to flank effectively and push the pheasants down and round the hill, making a lot of noise because the birds sometimes up on this top, and then hopefully flicking them just off the top here. And we know that from the top to the bottom, like that bloody thing going the wrong way. It's 388 metres to the bottom and some of the guns are lined out about 300 metres below us but luckily they hug the tree line. So hopefully we should see a load flick off nicely. Seeing a few pheasants flicking out and pushing over, like these birds here. I mean, the height of some of these birds when they're going straight out and over, so fast and really powering through. And you'll hear it. This is this is part of it. This is the beating we put the effort in to get the shooting back. That's what it's all about. I best catch up with everyone.
Yeah. Not as much as you'd think for here, no, but... Sounded like a reasonable show in the bird, but come here. I've had a few shots. Seems to have a bit of shooting, You'll have been on some proper shoots, won't you? Some yeah, we. Leave it. 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 You got to work, work for your pheasants on a proper, a proper estate, haven't you? It's been nice to know you. I hope you make it. I bet you're regretting the invite now, aren't you? Again? I bet you're regretting the invite now. Yeah. <laughs> We've made it, I think, about 300 metres up the hill. Rich, my guest, has just gone about another 50 or 60 yards up the hill. And hopefully we'll see some more pheasants. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love about this little estate though is just the scenery as I'm sure you've already seen it's absolutely breathtaking like I say I've been coming here for about five years to an invite um, luckily managed to get a place as a syndicate member and it's just absolutely staggering even on a day like today it's a little bit a little bit misty a little bit overcast but it's absolutely beautiful and when you get some birds coming over over you properly it's absolutely fantastic. This is one of the amazing things about this type of estate. You have no idea where the birds are coming from. So as Rich just, Rich just took a shot there, four birds went over that way and one went down there. We got that first shot. That was Rich. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk up this side here and then push it back towards as our team's walking this one. It's probably going to be the last drive we do, unfortunately, today because the mist rolling in is, it is freezing. Um, and we're hoping to shoot a few snipe and there's a few duck in here. We do get the occasional teal. We've got the non-toxics out and hopefully we'll shoot some ducks and some snipe. And um, There should be a few around, although the snipe might have started to peter off because there is a heavy ground frost and all of the ponds are frozen. So, so fingers crossed we'll get some, but if not, I mean, it's been a bloody good day already. We might have shot 20 or 30 pheasants, so fingers crossed uh, we'll get this done and then leg it back to the pub because it is bloody freezing.
<laughs> very oh, old. There we go. That's I better. can't see that far. It just looks like a present to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's, full, it's, it's just the ones that have fallen from height. There's, There's another duck somewhere, there. yeah. David died in it while I just waited to count. Yeah, I waited for right. count. Then he come uh, on. Yeah. 19 A great day of sport there and finally Mark Ripley is out on his local dairy farm hoping to knock down a few troublesome crows. With the weather against him he has to turn his attention to the rats. Let's see how he gets on. Right so as you can see I've just arrived at the local dairy farm here. Weather's not great, it's misty, horrible wet weather, um, but I have just noticed there's a crow just out in this field here next to me that's just feeding. So I'm going to grab the rifle and see if I can get a shot at him. A grey start, one crow down. So I'm using the uh, Brocock Sniper XR again. I really like this rifle actually, it's a nice compact little gun and um, it's proven very accurate and it's a powerful little gun too, which is one, one thing on here which is very nice, which I like. It's got a little um, power selector on here so you can reduce the power if you want to. So you've got five different power settings there. Uh, for that shot, I just took that on full power because that was out at 75, uh, yeah, 75 meters, so around about 80 yards. So um, I'm quite pleased with that actually. That was. Uh, a nice, a nice shot to start the day with. Um, so, uh, right, I'll just turn this scope off. I'm using the C50 uh, night scope, but it also has a colour day screen, as you can see from the footage there. Hopefully, as long as it recorded. <laughs> so, um, right, let's go and pick that crow up and have a look. So as you can see, the fields are absolutely waterlogged. We've had loads of rain, it just has not let up in the last couple of weeks. So it's not the nicest conditions to be out shooting. But nevertheless, for you guys, I am making the effort. Right, so that crow should be somewhere out, somewhere around here. There he is. There's one carrying crow, as you can see, there's a tidy old beak on that. Now, the reason it's important to control these birds is down here, uh, this is predominantly a uh, cattle farm, but we've also got sheep on here as well. And during the lambing season, which is just around the corner, these birds can cause absolute havoc, and a beak like that can do a lot of damage to a young lamb. So being that the weather's so miserable, I think what I'm going to do is drive down to the farmyard and just um, park up in the farmyard there and see if there's any more crows and magpies about in the backfield there. Um, there's usually quite a few feeding and picking through the slurry pit, so uh, I'm hoping, despite the weather, we might be able to find something down there. But uh, that's the thing with air gunning, you just have to kind of make your own sport, so let's go and have a look. So as you can probably see in here, the weather's actually got worse rather than better. So I've just stepped inside one of these containers here just to uh, take shelter for a minute. We've got one or two crows just sailing past. So I'm hoping one of them might land just out in the field here in a minute. It might give me a shot. This might be quite a good place actually to, to wait for a minute. So it's looking like it's letting up a little bit. Come another wonder. I 
able to find anything else around the farmyard, which was surprising. There was quite a few crows and that around down there. Uh, but with the um, the cattle where they were um, and caravans behind and houses and what have you it made it quite difficult to, to get a safe shot anywhere. So I've just driven up uh, up the road a little bit here to um, a little track that runs out across the fields there and this is usually quite good because you usually get one or two rabbits will come across here in the evening and come out um, just as it gets dark on the edge of uh, the field just behind me. So. This is quite a good spot to sort of ambush one or two and uh, hopefully just as it starts getting dark or when it gets dark I'll be able to knock one or two over. So the scoping net that I'm using on the rifle, this is the Pulsar C50. Um, it's a brilliant little scope actually for this sort of thing. Um, where this scope really shines is in low light when it's almost dark. It, um, it still gives you a colour image so even when your eyes are struggling to pick anything out this thing will still be showing you a, um, a colour picture which is pretty impressive and um, then when it gets that bit darker then you can switch over to black and white night vision use it with an IR but uh, yeah it's a good, good all round little scope and obviously as you've seen from the footage it's a colour, colour screen during the day um, and uh, yeah ideal for air gun and rimfire use I really like it as you can see it's getting pretty dark now but I'd still be able to shoot a rabbit if one came out on the track there as yet nothing has which is quite surprising well, I'll just record you a little bit of footage now just just so you can see what I'm seeing through the scope and you can see you get a good, pretty good idea of uh, of how clear this is even in these conditions so yeah it's a little bit pixelated when you sort of go a bit further out or at least with the with the zoom um so currently we're on on base mag there but uh you can see in the picture in picture mode on there it's a little bit grainy but still quite happily take a shot on a rabbit or something out there out to sort of 70 80 yards maybe a bit further i think that puddle there that's probably about that's probably about 70 yards down that track. So yeah, good, uh, good little scope. I've only glimpsed one rabbit that came across the track there and it went straight into the hedge. Um, and uh, now this rain's certainly not showing any signs of letting up. And the uh, front of the rifle's soaked and the inside of the truck is, is uh, getting very wet. I'm getting puddles in the pockets of the truck so I think I'm going to call it a day for today and uh, come out and have another look tomorrow. So yesterday's outing wasn't particularly successful, the weather was just totally against us but today the weather's a lot better and um, I did pop out again actually last night, uh, I had to come and have a look around this particular farm, uh, they're due to start lambing in a week or so and uh, the farmer here just wants me to have a little look around and see if I could uh, knock over one or two foxes before they, before they started. Uh, so I came out and had a look around here and in doing so I found an area near one of the uh, bird feeders that had quite a lot of rat activity around it so I've come back down here this afternoon and I'm gonna have a little sit out with the air rifle and see if we can deal with one or two of them so this farm also holds a uh, very good pheasant shoot and uh, there's several feeders around and the rats have taken a bit of a shine to the one at the bottom of this little wood just coming up in front of us So this is the area where I saw one or two rats. There were several coming out of this wood out to this feeder just out here. So I think this will be a good place to pitch up and see if I'm not one or two over. You can see here where the rats have been feeding on the grain here and going in and out underneath this fence. So this fence here will offer a brilliant bit of cover and also a stable rest. Now that's only about 20 metres from that feeder so that should be perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go off and just check the zero on the rifle just to make sure it's shooting bang on at 20 metres. Right so that target is exactly 21 metres away. So let's just put a shot onto that.
So as to be expected, that's shooting a little bit high. That is about one mil dot high, or just under. So rather than re-zeroing my rifle, what I might actually do is just use that mil dot as an aiming point. So to help get some clear shots, I've also brought with me a bag of table scraps. So I'm going to put that out in the open, spread it around a little bit, which will hopefully draw the rats out of cover so I can get a clean shot. So I've got myself nice and comfortable. I found a plastic drum in the barn now, I just borrowed. Um, but I've set my tripod up so I'm nice and comfy so I can sit here for a little while. Got a nice rest on the gate here. And uh, once it starts getting dark, say here tucked in this corner, then um, as long as I don't move too much, then they shouldn't notice me. That's the first one down. Here comes another one. Next to me, it's probably probably less than about ten yards. I can actually see several of them moving around in the wood just next to me. by the feeder. A thermal scope would be ideal for this because it will allow you to quickly get onto the targets. At the moment, I'm spotting all right with the thermal binoculars, but then trying to actually get on for a shot is a little bit more difficult.
and so I just thought I'll have a look behind me there and I just shot two that were right next to my truck literally about well probably about 20 meters behind me so <laughs> they're just coming out of this wood everywhere She's coming out onto the bay. <laughs> So that's another one by the uh, truck there. So that's three now by the truck. And I don't know how many out here, but there's quite a few dead ones. <laughs> so it seems to have dried up a little bit. There's still one or two around, but it, the action's gone a bit slow. So I'm going to uh, have a walk around, I think, and just um, pick this lot up. So I'll get some gloves on and then uh, go and have a little uh, gather up. So there's 15 rats that I've picked up, all pretty good size. And I'm pretty sure there's probably another four or five in the wood there as well, which I haven't been able to pick up. I know I shot quite a few in there. But uh, even so, the farmer will be pleased with that. So the action seems to have dried up a bit now. So I'm gonna call it a night. But I hope you've enjoyed the episode and thanks again for watching. Mark making the most of the conditions there. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's shooting show. If you've liked what you've seen, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're not a member of Bask, it's time to join. My name's Chris Castle, and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Bask, it's time to join now. Bask, looking after your sport, looking after you.